John Merrill, General Chairman of this 20th EEIC ICWA Exposition held here in Boston, the 1991 winner of the paper judged to be of lasting interest is titled A Brief History of Development in Electrical Insulation by Ken Mathis, General Electric Company retired. It's my privilege at this time to introduce to you Mr. Ken Mathis. The uh, title of this session is Insulation Systems, Past, Present, and Future. Uh, my responsibility on this, probably because of my age, was to talk about the, um, uh, uh, the, the history of uh, electrical insulation. And that's what the written paper is about. But because you can read the paper, I'm not going to use hardly anything that was in the paper at all, but rather tell you some stories, because I like to tell stories. Perhaps the earliest story I can tell <clears throat> is the one about a 10-year-old boy in 1923 who built a crystal radio source. Most of you are not old enough to remember. How many of you remember, how many of you ever built a crystal radio? Did you? Well, there are a few, there are a few hands up that did. And, um, but I built it for my family and they monopolized. I, I did it by winding a spaced bare copper wire on a oatmeal can. And it worked fine, so fine that I never had a chance to use it. So what did I do? I built another one. This time I used a tomato can, tin tomato can, took the paper off and wound the bare wire on the, pa on, on the, tin, on the tin can. And guess what? It didn't work. I learned my first lesson in electrical insulation some in 1923, and I'll let you calculate how many years ago that was. But um, uh, there, what we really need to know as we think to the future, and that's what this whole session is about, is what are these driving forces, the driving forces that actually lead to uh, the de developments for the future. Um, and the primary one is cost. What do things cost? And um, also, of course, the utility. Is it, does it do the needed job? Not too much, not too little, just the needed job. What kind, what kind of guides can we find or provide for electrical insulation? Well, cost is a complex. In this next uh, slide, complex, it's complex. Um, there are design and operational needs. All of that adds, adds to cost. Manufacturing, of course, is a basic aspect of cost. Ad adequate quality, believe me, not too much quality, uh, but certainly enough. Marketing, suitability and integrity. How many of you are marketers out there? Oh, yeah, some of you. Do you know what I mean by integrity in marketing? Uh, standards, they're important. Everybody says they're there, but they have to be developed. And uh, they are, there are industry standards, there are government standards, there are international standards. What about safety? How many of you have ever had to deal with OSHA, Operational Safety Hazard Administration? Oh boy. I remember on one occasion when I had to build a, a, a set of stairs down into my laboratory. And they had to be a certain size. I couldn't get them in at the, at the way that OSHA made me build them. So they said, you can use a ladder instead. Is a ladder safer than a steep set of stairs? I doubt it. But at any rate, that's there. And it's something that is involved in the cost of a product as we make it. Uh, service, operational efficiency, reliability. All of these things are obvious. Some of the legal aspects. Sometimes I serve uh, as an um, uh, expert consultant uh, in legal trials. Um, adequate life. How do we figure adequate life? I'm 78 years old. Anybody in this audience going to tell me when I'm going to die? I wish you would. I'd like to know. Um, replacement expense. Well, there won't be much replacement expense for me, 
but um, 